These geckos are usually mean as f. <laughs> like, oh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah, they got <laughs> bite. The most misunderstood gecko in the world is this right here, the Toke gecko. And in this video, we're gonna talk all about them. So Toke geckos get a bad rep because they're very smart and defensive animals. They are not gonna just let you pick them up and hold them like a little puppy. These guys are just out the gate, very defensive. If you try to grab them, they'll open up their mouth, they'll make noises at you, they'll bark at you, and they'll even try to bite you. And trust me, I've been bitten by these guys. You do not wanna be on the receiving end of that jaw. These guys are like the little pit bulls of the gecko world. Coolest thing here is that they're very smart so you could work with them and eventually they could be this tame. But I always tell people, whenever you get a Toke gecko, do not get it because you want a friendly, happy gecko. Get it because you love the species and you want to work with them. And eventually it'll be very rewarding to have a, a gecko like this. This animal is not ours. This is owned by our buddy Nick from the Reptile Boutique. He has worked with these animals for years. He raised this guy from a little baby. He has the daughter and, and a bunch of its related family members. Most of them are tame like this because he puts in the time and he's not afraid to get bit. For the most part, especially our Toke geckos, they're not super friendly yet just because we don't have the time to tame them down. This just goes to show you the potential that these animals have. They could be just as tame as a little crested gecko if you are taking care of them with respect and you understand their body language. And that's what we're going to get into this video. So here in this cage is one of our younger Toke geckos, not tame at all. It's actually a really beautiful mu mutation Toke gecko. I'm not really sure what it is. It's actually the product of a powder blue. There he is. A powder blue, ow, there you go. A powder blue crossed through a blue body green head. And then this, ow, this little freak came out. He's really pissed right now, really dark. He does kind of, when he's fired, the end pooping on me. See, beautiful Toke geckos, greatest species of geckos to keep. <laughs> Look at that. When these guys bite down, their eyes just sink into the back of their head. They're biting with as much force as they can. As a baby, it's not going to hurt me too much, but the adults will draw a good amount of blood from you. So there's a couple different mechanisms toke geckos use for defense. Their first one is scurrying away. So these guys are pretty quick and they're going to be jumping and just running as fast as they can. Is, now, is if they can't get away, the That's next thing they're going to do is puff up really big, as big as they can and start barking at you. That's actually where they get their name, toke, because it makes a noise just like that. And then their last defense mechanism, as you saw earlier, they will bite and they will bite as hard as they can. If you want to create a tame, a good relationship with the Toke Gecko, you do not do what I just did and grab him like that. What you do, you slowly start, you can start with hand feeding, tongue feeding, just building the trust, let the animal associate food or a relationship with you. Then slowly but surely, you're going to start trying to handle it. Now it is going to run a lot of the times, but you're just going to keep, you know, keep putting up with it, keep doing all of that. And then slowly but surely, you will create a beautiful bond with this intelligent animal. So one of the most interesting aspects of toke geckos is their behavior towards each other. These guys will actually stay in like a little communal group and the males and the females, once they're bonded, will actually raise their young. They take care of their babies and their young, unlike a lot of other species of geckos and lizards. They are arboreal, so that's why he's doing that. One thing to keep in mind is that they are not, you know, like a crested gecko where you could just put any male and any female together. They do have to be compatible with each other because those big jaws can cause a lot of damage to each other if they're not compatible. But if you want to hear more information about their familiar behavior, I recommend you guys join our membership program here on YouTube where we have the full presentation from the Gecko Symposium where the leading expert in Toke Gecko behavior was just going on and on about all their you know, familiar behavior. It was actually mind blowing and it's what got us so excited about Toke Geckos and why we're making this video. Being in South Florida, we are able to keep the Toke geckos outside. You can keep them successfully inside and outside, just depending on where you live. But this is how we keep them. You're going to see a lot of PVC tubes or cork hollows or any type, anything that acts like a tree hollow. These guys love hollows. They're literally there all day and only really come out at night. And then we have live plants, live pothos. They do great, very easy to care for. You see it overgrowing in the enclosure. And we just threw in a bunch of sticks. These guys love clutter. 
The more clutter, the better. They're gonna hide and wedge themselves into any little crevice that they can. And they also like to lay eggs in all these different crevices and cork hollows. As you can see right in there, some toke gecko eggs. And they generally like to lay in the same area. If you look slightly above it, you see some white markings, or that's where our previous clutch of eggs were laid. Since we're keeping these guys outdoors, we keep them in large screen enclosures. This is two foot wide by two feet long by four feet tall. If you're gonna just keep one, you can keep it in an 18, 18, 24, in an indoor and in a glass enclosure. But since we have the space, we're gonna give this pair nice large enclosures. So toke geckos are naturally from Southeast Asia, and that's why we could actually house them out here in South Florida. But if you're not in South Florida, you could keep them in a glass enclosure in your home. You just wanna make sure that you put a ceramic heat emitter on top of the enclosure. That's gonna create about an 85 to 90 degree ambient temperature near the, the heat emitter. And then off to the cooler side, it should be around 75 to 80 degrees. You don't wanna get these guys too, too hot because they're just not gonna thrive and they also need time to cool down. In here in Florida, they don't really bask, but if you have them indoors and you wanna provide a UVB bulb, you can absolutely do so. Just make sure that they have enough places to hide from the UVB rays. And if you're keeping them without UVB, make sure that when you dust the crickets or whatever bugs you're feeding with calcium, that the calcium has vitamin D3. Now, toke geckos are actually insectivores, but I have heard of a lot of people that actually will feed them crescent gecko diet and they will eat it up. We personally never have done that. We mostly feed insects. We have put crested gecko diet in there, but they don't typically go for it. When you feed insects to these guys, you want to keep the basics in check. You want to make sure that you have a good variety of insects. You want to feed large roaches, superworms, hornworms. They absolutely go bonkers for. But make sure you dust the insects with calcium and you gut load those insects because those nutrients are gonna go directly to your toke gecko. As far as watering goes, we typically like to just spray the enclosures. We have misting systems, all of our enclosures here. So a couple times a day, it'll rain on them basically and they lap that water up. You can provide a water bowl in the enclosure, but they don't typically drink out of the water bowl. But if you have them inside, indoors, I would definitely have a water bowl in there because it tends to be drier because of the AC when you keep them indoors. So toki geckos are pretty simple to sex. Just like any other geckos, the males will develop pores right above their vent area right here. This guy is a male. They don't always develop like a big bulge like some of the other geckos, but the pores are pretty evident to tell. Mr. Blue here is super nice that he's letting us look at his little private area, but a lot of toke geckos are gonna have not a good time when you're trying to do that to them. So what you could do is basically just look through the glass. When they're sticking on the glass, you can look and see uh, from the other side what sex they are. But Mr. Blue is cool and he basically lets us do whatever we want to him. Cool little tally wagger. All right guys, I hope you learned a little bit more about toke geckos today. Mr. Blue and I have to go now. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe. We're almost to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much and we will see you on the next one.